Welcome back guys. Now we're going to go ahead and discuss the Chrono Prism feature, which is on our access.tools page. The Chrono Prism is a training tool specifically for formation skydiving teams. And it was originally designed by Access Flight School for VFS team, Arizona X-Force. And the purpose behind it was to essentially streamline the process of gathering data and the metrics needed to ultimately improve performance. What you're going to see when we open this tool is there's going to be a stopwatch which you can open in tandem next to your training video. And then essentially as you time your skydive, it'll break all those times down, especially your block times, into its constituent parts. And then at the end, it will produce a PDF, which you can then reference and then essentially see and visualize how the performance is going. So let's dive right into it. To access Chrono Prism, open your web browser and in the address bar, type in chronoprism.access.tools. Once you've done that, You'll go ahead and load this first page here, and within the first step, you're going to configure this system to your jump. Like I said, VFS was the primary purpose for this tool when we developed it, so the default is going to be VFS, but you can change it again to whichever discipline you desire. In the second step, we're gonna add a documentation, which again is totally optional. I just went ahead and typed in the, uh, the fact that we're demonstrating the Chrono Prism here, and again, thanking you guys for watching this video. In the third step, we're going to type in the formation sequence that uh, was specific to the jump that we want to analyze. And again, if you were to launch the uh, 22 in this case intact, you can just leave it as is. However, uh, the video that I'm about to show you guys, we actually used a fire and forget exit. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in an X. Next, we'll go ahead and click score jump. Now that we have all the important uh, data configured to the way that we need it, we now need to take a look at the video. So again, we can just go ahead and pull that up. If you're doing this on your phone, you can just again use your fingers to manipulate the uh, score and penalty button here. However, since I'm doing this on the laptop, I'm actually going to be using the B button for penalties or busts and the period button for scoring the points. All that's left now is to just queue up the video uh, to right up until the exit. And then I like to leave just a little bit of a buffer so I can push play and then have enough time to again select the window uh, in the browser and then I have enough time to get my fingers ready on the keyboard and then I can go ahead and start scoring. Now keep in mind that the first point we're launching does not actually count but we do need to keep track of it for the purposes of starting the clock at the right time. So now I'm just uh, essentially scoring this jump All right, and as you guys can see, uh, within that 35 second working time, we've accumulated 22 points, and the timer stopped automatically. Next, we're gonna go ahead and do show performance, and we can again enlarge the page, and it's going to produce this PDF right here. You're gonna have a lot of information presented to you on just one page. Starting at the top right here, we can see when this analysis was performed, and then that custom text that we entered earlier will appear right here. In summary, we had a 22-point skydive, and because we didn't incur any penalties, our score and pace are identical. Moving down, we can now see a column here of uh, our times kind of broken down. First, we see the fastest times. So again, this right here was block 22 from the top to the bottom. And we can see that it was on page three where the fastest uh, 22 occurred. As we start moving down, we can start seeing the entire sky I've played out over time here. Again, this is the first page, followed by the second page, third and fourth. And then, like I said, page three is where we had the fastest 22. And I can see that here represented by that orange line. And that's clearly shorter than any of the other orange lines or any of the other 22s that we performed. This first gray line here just represents the starting time from when we left the plane to when we got to the top of the 22. Again, that's time that needs to be accounted for and is also something that you need to get used to as you start using this tool. 
as we continue to look at these uh, pillars here, these columns, we can see that the green one is by far the longest, and that again represents the uh, block nine. So going from the top to the bottom of block nine, it was by far the most technical move on that skydive, and we can see that certainly ate up the most time. But as we take a look again at page three, which was our fastest, we can see that this nine was superior to all the other ones in terms of how fast we executed it. So what I would do is I would go ahead and find that part of the video, trim it, and I would add that to our best of so we can review that for later and see what made that nine so much better than all the other ones. At the very bottom too, we can see how much time was unused out of the uh, working time, which again right here seems like we used used it fairly efficiently, which is good. And on the right hand side, again we can see that we started with a fire and forget exit and then moved into the rest of the dive. At the very bottom here too, you get a quick view of page ranking in terms of time. Again, page three was our fastest, followed by two and then one, which is fairly typical as when we're in subterminal air on the hill, usually the first page is going to be the slowest. And we can see that we started page four, but we didn't quite complete it in terms of the points necessary to complete the page. All right, guys, so there you have it. That is the essential tutorial and walkthrough for the Chrono Prism. Again, big takeaways here is that anybody can learn to use this tool and immediately start gathering data on team performance. Um, however, I would like to point out that it is up to the team or team's coach to decide what to do with that information and how to proceed within the training process. Again, we hope that you find this tool helpful and uh, we'll see you next time.